Hello there, it's Jay here with Jay's Vintage Junk and uh, today, as you can see, we are uh, back on with the Auric Atmos project and I have a little bit of news to report if we just uh, pan you up here and we can see if we look here we have a nice, crisp, steady, stable um, image of it uh, yeah, it seems to be working really, really well now actually the uh, video image I'm getting on them RGB is rock steady and it's, uh, it's really really crisp it's much much crisper than I've seen on a um, C64 on um, S even on SVID on a not SVID um, yeah SVID on a um, C or a C64C uh, the RGB output on this is really really nice there's no barring there's nothing it's really really crisp um, now this is not fully working yet uh, the only thing I seem to have to get working um, now really is there's some bad keys on it um, as I say let's try and print the um, usual hello world so let's go 10 we have nothing on one zero works so spacebar doesn't work but um, in basic I'll just show you this We've just zero print can't press spacebar but we can press shift in the quotes Hello, I can't press spacebar again, that doesn't work. But we can type world. And we shift and hit the quotes again. Enter, that works. And we press 20. We can actually put 20 in because 2 works. Can't press space, but go to. We can't press 10, but we can press 0. And basic doesn't really care about the spaces, to be honest. Enter, and now if we run that there we go so as you can see the computer is actually basically working now um, I've just got to sort them keyboard issues out um, right we'll switch that off and I will uh, pan you down to the computer let's, uh, let's see here right um, we'll disconnect that like that and I'll turn it over and I'll show you what we've had to do to this computer to actually get it working because it's not it's had a had quite a bit of work done to it right there we go let's see if we can get that in anymore yeah and I will have a point and I will show you what I have done we'll find something to point with there we go right now first things first the video, um, the first video fault, which was uh, the RGB fault, as we found out, it wasn't the um, IC7, which is the ULA. And the only other IC I could think it could possibly be and have something to do with was IC22 here, which is just a buffer. Um, you could do the same thing with a big stack of transistors, with a few transistors, to be honest. It's basically just a little um, buffer circuit, that. Now, since I got this computer, I've always noticed that the um, heat sink there for the voltage rig has got hot, hot. It's you know, been um, very, very hot. Um, when I pulled the old one of them out, I didn't have a replacement for it, so I couldn't go any further. But I did notice when I pulled that out that the uh, heat sink wasn't getting anywhere near as hot. It was still hot. I mean, um, it's only a tiny heat sink. Uh, but it was significantly cooler. Um, I should have really got my um, digital thermometer out and checked, but I didn't. Uh, but it was significantly cooler with that out. Um, that's the uh, that's the offending item there. Now a new one has arrived. I've uh, installed that, and um, we got video. Yeah, we uh, we got video back. Uh, it was. Um, seem to be working um, alright so I thought I'll have a go seeing um, if I can get RF out of it so I tried to get um, RF out I couldn't get RF out so I thought right I'll have a go at the uh, like I said before I'll comp mod it so I put the comp mod wire back in in there um, I am not amplifying the composite output at all I thought I'll just see what I can get straight out of it it might be a bit dim but I'll see what I can get straight out of it and even though the RGB that side was working I was still getting absolutely nothing out of there um, and what I found was this little trimmer here now have you noticed that doesn't look right on the board 
and what I found was there was a normal sized little um, variable trimmer there and it looked like sometime in the past something's happened to the computer it's certainly not happened while I've uh, been in ownership of it and when I touched that trimmer it actually broke apart here's the uh, bits of it it looks like sometime in the past that trimmer's got crushed and it's actually it actually broke it didn't look at first because it was held in place it actually looked fine and you can actually you know it still worked you could still tweak it I hadn't tweaked it but you could still you know, it didn't look like there was anything wrong with it until you looked really closely and you could see that the legs were squashed on it when I moved it a little bit with a screwdriver it just broke apart and it was a 220 ohm um, little trimmer pot so I had to hunt through all my uh, trimmer pots I've got and I didn't have any twin, um, 220 ohm in uh, that size all I could find was a um, like a vertical mount one it's meant to be stood up like a little tombstone and it's probably a bit older, it's probably from the 70s um, to be honest that um, part, it's in, uh, it was in all my stocks and what I did is I, uh, I cut two of its legs off and I passed some component wire through the two points and soldered them on and I formed two new legs underneath, bent them round and I soldered it in position, so electrically it's absolutely right, it's the right value, everything it's just, it's physically, it's, it's wrong, you know, it doesn't look right on the board uh, I will probably change it for the correct part eventually uh, when I get one but for the moment it does work and I have um, actually got a um, output up from there so both video outputs are now working then haha <laughs> yeah um, I have a feeling this computer is going to come back and um, find more faults with itself in the future and I think it's just simply down to the fact of the over voltage it had got because the next thing that happened was um, the keyboard line jammed, as in, it was as though someone had held one of the keys, like the uh, return key down, constantly, and uh, you get a tick, 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 tick noise coming from the speaker, and then eventually on screen, you just watch all the text kind of like go up like that, and then you just have the little um, flashing cursor in the corner, as though it's someone's pressing return all the time. So I had a look on the circuit diagram. And the only thing I could see that could possibly be an issue, the keyboard interface seems to come off the AY sound chip there. So I was thinking, oh, I hope there's nothing wrong around there. But the only other thing I could find in um, circuit was that could be a possibility was this transistor here, which was a which is a um, what is it? It's a BC five four seven. In fact, all three transistors were BC five four sevens. And it looked a bit odd. I've got them here. And I've took all three transistors out. And if you look at the top of it, I don't know if you can make this out on the camera. Oops, I bumped it there. Let's see if I can get this in, in shot. I don't know if you can see. I don't think this is going to come out very well, actually. Let's see if it'll focus on you on it. Come on, focus. But if you look at the top of the transistor, it looks kind of like domed in and discoloured and not like you would see a nice shiny, let's get one that's no oh, that's uh, hang on, let me see if I've got a new transistor in here Ugh. look at the top of that transistor oops you see how it's all nice and shiny and it's all even and flat well these let me get one of these if you look at the top of that transistor you can see how it's all domed in and it's pitted and it's rough and all three transistors have actually one of them still still looks all right on the top but it's when you ch check it on a transistor tester um, it comes up faulty the other two it actually looks like whenever it went off it's actually blown the top off the transistor the one that still looks all right was actually um, TR2 there which is the one that I believe is to do with the um, keyboard um, but the other two which I think are to do with the um, cassette loading um, they're actually blown the tops off them and all three are uh, yeah they're dead so I can only presume that happened um, due to the over voltage problem and it killed them two straight away 
but the one for the keyboard because the keyboard was functioning before um, I could type things in and what have you it just scrolled like mad but um, I think that finally gave up the ghost so um, unfortunately I only had one uh, BC547 um, in stock uh, which I've replaced TR2 with there um, what I've used for um, TR1 and 3 is I have got plenty of BC um, 237s in stock now um, the BC 237 if you actually look at the characteristics on it is very 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 similar to a um, standard BC 547 uh, BC 547s is very there's like various different versions of it I think it's like an A B and C version and uh, the only difference is the gain um, the higher the number like the C is a higher gain um, the one that was in that position there TR2 was a type C and fortunately the only one that I had in stock is also a type C so that works they have a slightly higher gain than a standard um, BC547 the other two I replaced with um, BC 237s um, now the only real difference I can see so far because uh, spec wise are very 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 similar is the um, on the BC 547 um, and the BC 247 um, base is the middle pin but on the uh, 247 um, collector and emitter are reversed in comparison with the 547 so all that means in real life and um, I don't know if you can see it here is um, if you look at the um, the printing, the mass printing on the board, um, the transistors are in the wrong way around. And that's all you have to do to use um, the 237 in replacement as a um, standard 547 is just put it in the other way around. Like I said, the centre pin, which is your base, is the same. It's just the collector and the emitter swap round. So yeah, so I've um, replaced them transistors as well. And um, as you can see, the computer basically now seems to be working. All I need to do is sort out that um, issue with the keyboard. They all seem to be individual from the solder marks. They all seem to be individual little key switches. I think I'm hoping anyway. So uh, my next port of call will be to um, strip down that keyboard, clean all the contacts inside it, and hopefully get the keyboard uh, working again. Um, then we can get on to testing some um, software and some games and stuff on this and I do have, I only have one legit proper piece of software for the Auric Atmos and it is, uh, it is this it's the infamous Cassette 50 where it's uh, 50 fantastic games on one cassette so as soon as we get this um, up and running I think we'll, uh, I'll get my cassette player out and we'll have a go with um, some cassette 50 games on the uh, Auric Atmos. So um, I'm going to leave this one here for now. Um, thanks for watching that and um, see you next time. Goodbye.